Good morning. Am I loud? I saw my mother-in-law go, ugh. <laughs> um, my name's Justin. Um, this is my wonderful praise band over here. And uh, obviously, you guys see that uh, Jeff Head and uh, his lovely wife, Kim, Kim is uh, missing. They're on vacation this week. So uh, we're trying to fill some big shoes this week, OK? All right, so uh, we have a new guitar player. We have a new guitar pa player, also Larry. We're still looking for a drummer and a pianist. <laughs> we're, we're giving tryouts at the end. There's no tryouts. Uh, there's no tryouts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, my my verse uh, that I'm going to bring to you today is uh, John 5, uh, 19. Okay, and it says, "I tell you the the truth." The son can do nothing by himself. He can do all. He can do only what he he says his father is doing. Whatever, but because whatever the father does, the son also does. And what I mean by that verse is, we're gonna play the best that we can today. But I need your help. Okay, I need all y'all's help. All right. So uh, we're gonna bring our heat. And I need your help to carry us through, okay? All right? All right, praise God.
Darkness tried to roll over my bones Sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love Shame no longer has a place to hide I'm not a captive to the lies Not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken Cause fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love Fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love fear chance when I stand in your love cause there's power that can break all every chain there's power that can empty out the grave there's resurrection power that can save there's power in your name there's power in your name one more time there's power that can break off every chain there's power that can empty out the grave there's power resurrection power that can save there's power in your name there's power in your name cause peace doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Fear doesn't stand the chance when I stand in your love. Fear doesn't stand the chance when I stand in your love. Standing in your love. Standing in your love.
How you doing? Great. I'm so glad. That's good to hear. Hey, you know what? We have a Bible story this morning that I just wanted to talk to you about just a little bit. It's a story about a man named Thomas. Now, Thomas did something called doubting. You know what that word means? No? Well, doubt means, yeah, just don't believe stuff. What if I said, oh, I just won a million dollars? Would you believe me? You would. How about if I said, oh, I just bought a million new cars? Oh, you don't think, you don't believe me. So that means you doubt me, because I said something so fantastic that it, it is just too hard to believe. Well, guess what? Neither one of those things are true. But the thing Thomas didn't believe was true. Thomas wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came to visit them, and he said, I don't believe it. He said, unless I see the nail holes in Jesus' hand, because remember how Jesus was killed, being nailed to a cross? He said, I won't believe it. I, I have to see it for myself. Well, guess what? About a week later, Thomas was hanging out with his friends, and Jesus appeared again. And so he went up to Thomas, and he said, Oh, Thomas, stop your doubting. I wish you would believe. And he held out his hand, and he showed Thomas where those injuries were, where those holes were in his hand from when he was killed. And he, Thomas was like, Oh, it really is you. He finally believed. And you know what Jesus said to him? He said, oh, Thomas, he said, how great it is when someone can believe without seeing. You had to see in order to believe. In our scripture lesson this morning, it tells us that story, and then it ends with two verses that I really like. They say that Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, and some of them didn't get written down in this book, but some of them did so that you might believe. See, we weren't around when Jesus got killed on a cross and when he came back to life. You're not 2,000 years old, are you? No. How old are you? You're just four, yeah. So you missed it by a couple of years. Um, but you have this book, the Bible, to tell you the story so that you too can believe. They're here for you so that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you will have life in his name. That's what the scripture says. Pretty cool, huh? You do have a really heavy one? Yeah. Cool. So you have, when you're picking it up, it's really big? Yeah, I have this little one, but guess what? It's purple. I bet Mimi would like that. What do you think? Yes, yeah. yeah, she would. Let's pray together, okay? Dear God, we thank you for this book. Whether it's little or big, we know that the stories that are in there help us to know you and believe in you. Thank you for being our Messiah, the Son of God. We pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Can you hear me better? I got a new battery. Good. Yeah, I got a new battery. Well, the battery, I mean, this got a new battery. I didn't get a new battery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to look at the Gospel of John, chapter 20, starting at the 19th verse. And for you folks that are watching live stream, I'd like you to grab your Bible and turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 20, and we're going to start at verse 19. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. 
And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have light in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Thomas. We thank you for his, his honesty. We thank you, Lord, that because of his story, many of us who struggle with the faith can know that, that we're in good company. And I ask, Lord, that you fill this sanctuary with your Holy Spirit and open our minds and our hearts for the word that you have for us. And through me, or in spite of me, may your word speak to your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. When I was a young man, we had a tradition in, our, in my family that we, every Friday night we would watch Johnny Carson. Any of you guys watch Johnny Carson? Yeah, it's, it was something that we looked forward to every Friday night. Well, Johnny Carson uh, visited Harvard University because Harvard University was going to give uh, Mr. Carson a reward, a reward, award for all his achievements in television. And at the end of the ceremony, a member of the press asked Mr. Carson, what would you like to have inscribed on your tombstone? Where well, Johnny Carson thought for a second and answered with the words that he used before every commercial break on his television show. He wanted his tombstone to say, I'll be right back. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to die and he would be right back in three days. On the second Sunday of Easter, we read the story of Thomas. Now, Thomas has always been branded as Doubting Thomas because he won't take the news of Jesus' resurrection on hearsay. But when you read the Easter story, you'll find that in every gospel, the reaction of the disciples was more doubt than faith. For example, if you read the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew says that the 11 disciples met the Lord in Galilee and they worshiped, but it also says that some doubted. In the Gospel of Mark, we read that the reaction at first was not belief, but disbelief. And our lesson for today, Thomas insists on seeing the Lord for himself 
and touching his wounds. I hear many people find fault with Thomas because of that and kind of use him as a whipping boy, but I think there's value in Thomas's testimony. It gives us insight into actually the value of doubt and how sometimes doubt and faith work together. In our story, the disciples had scattered, they had fled, they had gone back to their old jobs, and Thomas was not with them. For they were there at Jesus' resurrection appearance, and Thomas was not. Now, we can only speculate how they would react if they had not been present for Jesus' first resurrection appearance, but it might not be too far off to guess that they would have reacted just like Thomas reacted if they had not been there at that first resurrection appearance. You know, Thomas did a lot for the faith. Tradition has Thomas carrying the gospel to India. Tradition has Thomas being martyred for the faith. But despite of all the good things Thomas did, he's always going to be remembered as Doubting Thomas. And I think that's very unfortunate. Many people, and maybe you, have been raised in a religious environment that places doubt and faith as opposites, in which doubt is positioned as the opposite of faith. And often the story of Thomas is used to reinforce that belief that doubt and faith are opposites, but that's not really the case. Unbelief, atheism, that's really the opposite of faith. In times when our faith needs a tangible reality to grab hold of, it's good to know that our Lord does not meet our doubts with chastisement, but the Lord meets our doubts with grace. Easter is not the end of, of doubt and, and fear, but Easter is an invitation for us to trust. And it's a reminder that when life closes in around us and we feel like we have nothing to grab on and hold on to, that Christ is risen. Thomas came to his faith after expressing his doubt. Many people tell me, that they came to faith after a period of questioning, after a period of doubting. For often faith does come through questioning and doubt. At the end of the story, Thomas is moved to proclaim, my Lord and my God. But he only says, my Lord and my God, after that struggle, after his struggle with doubt. The other disciples here need to be credited, though. They need to be credited for not letting doubt or insufficient faith determine who's in their company and who's out of their company. Thomas is never excluded. Thomas is never driven away because he doesn't believe strong enough. They don't tell Thomas, you can't come back until you believe. No. Thomas is always included in their company. To the end, Thomas is included in the circle. And we see here that faith and doubt live together. The other disciples were also confused. They were trying to make sense of what was happening. They were meeting behind locked doors. They were afraid. They worried what happened to Jesus might happen to them. They were frightened. And suddenly out of nowhere, Jesus appeared to them and showed them his hands and his feet, and greeted them the word, with the words, peace be with you. I imagine they did not feel a lot of peace inside at that particular time, though, because they were fearing for their lives. And they were wondering what was going on there. How did Jesus get in the room? The doors were locked. They were anxious. They were afraid. They were uncertain. They didn't know what was going to happen next. And Jesus said, peace be with you, two times. And they started to relax. They started to calm down. And they started to rejoice. 
and be glad. Fear does that to us. Fear can make our lives miserable if we let it. Many people think that the opposite of fear is, is courage, and courage is indeed a very good quality to have. Courage allows us to face our battles head on and fight. But the opposite of fear really isn't courage. The opposite of fear is actually faith. At least that's the biblical answer. The biblical answer to fear is actually faith. Faith that God is with me. Faith to know that I am not alone in this world. Faith when I see no hope, but I know one who can give me hope. I know one who is the source of hope. Faith is not being able to discern God's will in one's life, but believing God's hand is still present and at work. Faith is not believing in ourselves, but believing in God. There may be someone listening this morning that is dealing with fear. There's a lot of reasons that we fear things. It's human to fear. Maybe it's because of health. Maybe it's because you lost your job. Maybe it's because you're going through a divorce. Maybe it's because you're financially in debt. Maybe it's because of a relationship that went sour. We may not be able to discern God's hand in a particular situation, but we know that God is at work. The Holy Spirit is always with us, no matter if we can feel it or not. Sometimes, as Christians, we're afraid to let God take over our lives, to let God be in total control. Sometimes, as Christians, we're afraid to witness to our faith because we're afraid what other people might think about us. Or maybe they, we fear that people will misunderstand us. We, we live in a very skeptical society, and this skepticism has made a lot of people um, not, um, has, has made a lot of people turn away from Christianity. This skepticism has infected the, the credibility of our Christian faith in the minds of people. And so instead of turning to the Christian faith, they turn to the government or they turn to our ed educational institutions and hope that these things will help them in their fears in life. But that is not the answer. The answer to our fears won't be solved by the government. They won't be solved by our educational institutions. And they won't even be solved by a prosperous economy. The place where fear is overcome is the church. The place where hope must begin is the church of Jesus Christ. Our faith can remove the skepticism and the fear that we have that characterizes so many people in our society today. Thomas was a skeptic too. Thomas was a skeptic. We see here that Thomas was a kind of fellow that, that for him, seeing was believing. Thomas was not the type of fellow that believed in fairy tales. When the other disciples told him of Jesus' reappearance, Thomas shook his head and said, no, fellows, no, I'm not going to believe that at all. Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand in his side, I will not believe it. And a whole week went by with Thomas struggling, with Thomas doubting. But he still stayed in the circle with his friends. A week later, the disciples were meeting together, and the risen Lord appeared to them again. But this time, Thomas was with them. And Thomas saw for himself the Lord standing right in front of him. 
And Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And that was all it took. And Thomas exclaimed, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, these words were not just for Thomas. These words are for us, because we are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. If there's anybody watching this service that is struggling with doubt, struggling with belief, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I need your forgiveness. I believe Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross for my sins and you raised him from the dead. I want to make him my Lord and Savior. Send the Holy Spirit into my life and help me be the person you want me to be. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, and I encourage you to tell a Christian friend, to tell a Christian friend who can support you in your spiritual walk. Thank you. Wow, what Wow, what a sermon. That was really awesome. I think we can all put that into our life through our our walk with God, I tell you. Um, this next song, Come to the Table, is my pretty much my path with the Lord. So, it really talks to me. <laughs> Outside looking in, what the grace begin? We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give. Oh, the shape that we were in. Long, long hope seemed lost. Love opened the door. Young and to the young and to the 
the old All the hunger, all the thirst All the last and all the first All the poplars and the princes All who found and yet forgiven Who dreamed and all who suffered All who loved and loved another All who chained and all who freed All who won and fall and leave Everyone who left and down Who lost and have been found Who are right and labeled right And are wrong and everyone to hear this song Come to the table Come join the sinners who have been redeemed Take your place Beside the Savior, sit down and be set free. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. invite you folks that are watching us live stream to uh, join us by getting some bread and some juice for Holy Communion. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, remember how Jesus took his disciples to the upper room and after sitting them around the table, he took bread and gave thanks. And he gave the bread to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Eat of it as often as you will in remembrance of me. And when the supper is over, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave the cup of disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it as often as you will, in remembrance of me. So when we eat the bread and drink of the cup, remember your life, death, and resurrection, and we look forward to your coming again. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with Christians around the world, until we gather together at your heavenly banquet. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Taking the wafer or the bread, the body of Christ broken for you, take, eat, and be thankful. And then taking the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you, take, drink, and be thankful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and the cup we just received. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, to increase our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody stand. Used to be poor, 
creation eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand before my failures and carried the cross for my shame my sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand so what can I say and what can I I do, but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So I walk upon salvation, your spirit and I. can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So what can I say? What can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? Here we go. So I'll, I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul Lord to you surrender all I am is yours I'll stand my arms I not abandon in all for the one who gave it all I'll stand so, Lord, do you surrender all I am is yours. I'll stand, arms high and all abandoned in all for the one who gave it all. I'll stand, you, Lord, do you surrender all I am. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all for the one who gave it all. I'll stand with you, Lord, to you surrendered all. I'll stand with arms high, heart abandoned. 